Hey guys, let's do, uh, let's just wait just one more minute and we'll start. Okie dokie, what's up everybody? It is Wednesday, May 13th. Welcome on this sunny day. It's pretty nice and it's only getting nicer and hopefully it just keeps getting nicer and nicer and nicer. Um, so today we will be drawing, of course, an animal. Before I show you what we'll be doing today, I just need you to get a black marker, have your color pen pencils ready, and have a sharpener if you're using those, or you can use crayons, that's fine as well. Paper, please, hard, flat surface, and smiles. <whistles> Very important. Do, 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 do. So, without any further ado, today we will be drawing a very strong, wise creature. Uh, also very iconic and colorful. Check it out. It's a mandrill. Some people get this guy confused with a baboon. They're actually quite different. But we could call him a baboon if you want. A lot of people refer to it as a baboon. But it's actually called a mandrill. Uh, we have a lot of very cool colorful features to do today. Um, we're going to be using a lot of different colors, and um, I would say you could do any color mandrill you want, but because we're doing so many different colors, it'll probably be easier to follow along with me and end up with something similar to this. And the only reason I say that is because if we start, you know, doing red out here and orange in here, and we might just start getting confused. So if you prefer to follow my lead today as far as color goes, I think we're all going to end up with something uh, a little better. Um, but feel free to use your imagination, do whatever you want like we always do. Um, all I can do is just give you my advice on uh, how I think we should tackle this one today. I'm going to give you uh, almost a minute, maybe 30, 30 seconds to 45 seconds to take a look at some of these features. This very sort of Oh, I don't even know, because clamshell looking shape here, long red nose, white beard, crazy hair, lots of yellow fur, yellow beard too, uh, yellow in the bottom of the beard as well. So take a look and I'll be right back. All right, what do you say we get going? Uh, just like we always do, I'm going to start with the nose. With my marker. So before we hit the go button here, let's get ourselves a nice clean sheet of paper. Okay, here we go. Should be a fun one today, guys. Something a little different. Very colorful. Colorful in nature, not just in our imaginations. So like I said, we're going to start with the nose today. Um, it's pretty big. So we're going to need to just make a couple of mental notes while we plan out 
how to begin. And first things first, let's find the center of our page. It's about right there. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what halfway up is and what halfway down is. Okay. And so, you know, about here to about here. That's going to be the length of our nose. And the nose is going to be this big long thing with a big bulb at the end and then comes up almost like an onion with its shoots coming out of it or or garlic or uh, you know something like that a root vegetable shape okay so again i'm in the middle halfway up and halfway down that's going to be the length of my nose so to draw this i'm going to try and do it in one stroke i'm going to come down i'm going to open big and then i'm going to come up i'm going to taper a little bit as i come back up so watch me and then do this yourself because there's a little, there's a couple little shapes um, as I make this nose that I want you to notice, okay? So I'm going to come down, tapering out a little bit. And I'm going to bubble out real big. All right, and then I'm going to come back up. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I say about that. It adds character. So in there, I want to draw a couple nostrils, and those just look like, well, maybe I'd be in like a nine on this side and a P on this side, just like this. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to draw in the eyes, okay? The eyes are going to be right at the top here, and they're quite small, and they're quite close together. They are going to be in the shape of a tilted lemon, which we've done before. I'll draw the top of the eye first, and then the bottom of the eye, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Just like this. Top of the eye, and the bottom of the eye. All right, do the same thing on the other side. Top of the eye and the bottom of the eye. Okay, and before we move away from the eyes, let's draw a circle in the middle of each one, just like that. And let's draw some little arc lines on the outside to give that eyeball a little bit of a round shape. And color in the outside there too. Okay, I'm just going to fix that a little bit, doo dee doo doo Okie dokie. Next thing I want to do is I'm just going to add little arc lines underneath the eye. Pretty much the same shape as the bottom of the eye. Just like this. And then I'm going to add the brow in above the eyes, which is just going to be one big arc line over the top. Just like this. There we go. Right above that, I'm just going to make a couple little wiggles here. Just to remind me that there's going to be a color transition there. And it's pretty close to this arc line. We don't have to go too high. Maybe it just looks like that. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we've got the majority of the middle of the face done, we're going to draw in these really, really cool, unique shapes that the mandrel has for cheeks. These are going to be these big, bright blue seashell or scallop shaped shapes. Okay, now to draw these, it's a little tricky. Uh, we're going to draw, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, sort of, mm, I don't know, big balloony looking shapes on each side. But the way to do that is I'm going to draw this one on the right, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the left, and then I'm going to do another one and another one, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay. So follow me along here, because this is, we want to pay close attention here. We don't want to end up with these lines coming way out here. We, we only want them to take place in here, so we're going to make these lines very deliberate. The first one's probably the trickiest. It starts about here. It comes up, turns right around, comes right down to the nose, and it looks just like this. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. The next one's going to be a little more narrow, but still pretty straightforward. And it's going to connect to the nose just below where this one connected. And it looks just like this. Okay. Now the next one's going to be a little bit bigger on top. And then it's going to really dive in and meet that one we just did down there. And it looks just like this. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Here we go. The next two are small or shorter, but one's wide and one's really skinny. Check it out. Wide. See how it's straight. Wide. See how I left that gap in there? Make sure to do that. It's going to help give these anatom anatomical details. And the last one is the short one, and it's going to come out and dive and meet that one, just like this. Okay? That's it. Right. The next series of lines we're going to make are going to give us the rough idea of where the edge of the fur might be. All right. So to do that, I'm going to kind of imagine this brow line continues outwards on either side. And then I'm going to make these zigzagging or lightning bolt lines curve. And this, these are just going to be short ones, okay? Just going to be short ones. We're not going to go too long here. So again, I'm imagining that this arc line continues. Maybe I'm coming out a little bit further. All right, and I'm just going to go make some lightning bolt lines out here. Okay? How about right about here? We'll make it like that. There we go. Now from there, I'm, I'm going to come down and out a little bit on either side. I'm going to make these big sort of bent, si bent sideways W's. And I'm just going to make one on the left and one on the right. Come down, maybe out a little bit, and just make these big W's like that. Come down, maybe out a bit. Bent W's.
Okay, so the way we're going to do the mouth, which is right here under the nose, is a little bit different than anything we've done for mouths before. It's going to be kind of like a lightning bolt line. It's going to be on its side. It's going to be really flat. And I'm going to start in the middle, okay? And I'm just going to make a couple of lightning bolt lines that go outwards. So start in the middle, down off the nose, not connected. And just go like that. And of course, I want to do the same thing on the other side. And before I finish up with my marker, I'm just going to rough in a little bit of the beard down here so I know how to color it. And that's just going to be another series of these lightning bolt lines coming down towards the middle. They don't need to connect. All right? So with this being done, we're ready to start adding some color. I'm going to cap my black marker. I'm going to give you guys 20 or 30 seconds to catch up. Make sure you guys have all the lines you want in there. And we will begin with color in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start coloring the, 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 these sort of, oh man, I don't know, these cheeks. I'm not sure what this feature is called, but I guess they're cheeks. Um, some sort of weird feature, I'm not sure, but they're blue. And in order to color these in blue, I'm going to get two shades of blue today. I'm going to get a dark blue and a light blue. Now, if you want to try different colors, okay, I welcome you to do so, of course. But... Just remember, if I'm using blue and I'm using two shades of dark blue and a light blue, if you wanted to do this part green, get a dark green and a light green. But I'm going to do blue. These are the two blues I've chosen. I've got a dark blue here and a light blue here. I'm going to start with my dark blue. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color in around the top and the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to pull a little bit of this dark blue down along these stripes, but I'm not going to go uh, down along these ridges, but I'm not going to come all the way down. I'm just going to come down a bit. So first thing I'm just going to do is shade the bottom, just like this. Okay, and you can go ahead and do that yourself. Okay, and I want to shade the top as well. And when I do the top, I kind of want to follow these ridge lines a little bit. Okay, same thing on the other side. Okay. This is a little bit more of a controlled application than usual. We're used to doing these big scribble lines and stuff like that. We're going to get into that, but I want to make sure that these middle features stand out prominently. Switch over to my lighter blue. And just a mental note here, I'm going to leave a little bit of white throughout the middle of this, just to make it look a little more three-dimensional. So I'm not going to come all the way through. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the dark. Do some on top and do some on the bottom and maybe chase up the ridges a little bit, just like this. And on the bottom as well. Still leaving a little bit of white in the middle there, a little reflection, a little extra coloration, a little bit of that white paper showing through. Goes a long way. I like the way that looks. Alright, so I'm done with blue. 
that would be my first color. All right, the second color we're gonna need today for the nose is red or a pink kind of. Um, same thing with the blue, we're gonna need two values of that. Two values of red or pink. The two values I've chosen is this dark pink or dark, sort of a neutral red and this bright pink. Those are the two colors I've chosen today. So the way to do this is I'm gonna, again, similarly to what we did here at the nose, I'm gonna, I want, uh, with the, these blue shapes, I'm gonna leave the middle of the nose light or almost white. I'm gonna start with the dark red. I'm gonna come down the sides, okay? And I'm going to shade in pretty much everything on the nose lightly with a little bit of dark ap applied after, okay? So I'm going to come down the sides like this. Both sides like this. All right. And then I'm going to shade the bottom of the nose. All right. And then I'm just going to color the whole nose in red lightly for now. We're going to add a little, another color and we're going to layer this. Maybe it's a little darker on the outside. A little darker in the nostril. Maybe there's a little darkness in the middle there. And again, I want to leave a little bit of white in here, so I'm going to just softly shade in that area there. Okay? Let me square off the top of the nose a little bit. Okay, that's good enough for my dark red. I'm going to move up to my pink, and I'm going to color right over this. Not too dark, not too dark and color in a little bit of that white area. Again, not too dark. I want to leave a little bit of white in there. Okay. And with this pink, I'm really going to darken in the nostril there. Really going to darken it in. And maybe there's a little bit more of a ridge on top. And down through the middle. Reinforce these dark edges with some more pink. Maybe square it off a little bit there, down the bottom. And then gently shade upwards. All right. And that's it. That's enough red. That's enough red for today. Okie dokie. The next thing we're going to do is I just want to break away from color for just a moment and get a light gray. Light gray if you have it. If you don't have it, uh, you can use a, a light blue or something like that. I'm just going to make a few strokes to remind me that as I apply color, I want to leave some light areas behind. So I'm going to get this light gray here. And I just want to put a little bit in here to remind me not to color here. Because that the mandrel's brow is white, so I want to make sure that I don't color into there. So I'm using this to remind me to leave that alone. And I want to do the same thing around the mouth and the beard. And I'm just going to do kind of the same thing I did up there. Just add some of this in to remind me to leave it alone. Same thing on the bottom. Okay. Maybe there's a little bit of this going down here. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to some of this fur. Let's have some fun here. So I'm gonna do the fur mostly brown, maybe a little bit of olive green, some yellow, so let me show you what colors I've chosen. First of all, I'm going to have two browns, a dark brown and a light brown. Why don't we start there? Let me just sharpen this up. So again, I'm going to have a dark brown and a light brown. If you've chosen to uh, divert from my color palette, just make sure you have Two shades of the same color that you want to do the fur. As I always do, I'm going to start with the dark brown first. 
and I'm going to use my imagination to, oh, you know what? Sorry. If you want to get that light gray out again, or whatever you use to mark these highlights, let's do that around the nose too. I don't want to get too close to the nose because there is a lot of white fur around the nose of our mandrel, and I don't want to color in too close to that. Okay, so again, back to my dark brown. The fur grows this way. That's why we have these lines that are help guiding the direction, okay? So with this dark brown, I'm gonna stay pretty close to these features, you know, come out a bit, all right? I'm not gonna worry about filling it in and pushing down really hard. I'm just gonna start laying in some color and then we'll go from there, okay? So I'm gonna start outside of the eye all right, I'm going to come down and I'm going to keep my fur growing all along here and stop. All right, here we go. All right, same thing on this side. And I'm using that technique where I'm using the direction of my pencil to indicate the growth pattern of the fur or the direction the fur might be growing. Put a little bit more of this above the eyes. And I'm gonna put some of this way down in here underneath. And I'll put some above the eye too, I think. We'll be coming in here with more color, so. And before I finish up with this dark, I wanna reinforce my lines here with a little bit more contrast. All right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to scribble smaller lines just to give me more dark right on the edge of that cheek feature there, those blue bulbous cheek feature. All right, so I'm just coloring in down the line here, a little extra contrast along that feature. There we go. Okay, so my next color is going to be light brown. I've chosen this light sandy brown. And so with this, I'm gonna sort of do what I usually do, reinforce or chase my darker values around in a very similar way that I've done my first color. Do a little bit of this underneath here as well. I'm going to add a little bit of it right out here. I'm also going to add it right up here, and this is going to kind of come to a point, okay? Just like this. See how this guy's kind of got a diamond shape overall. I'm just going to add a few little funny sticky outy hairs up here. Okay, I'm also going to use, I'm just going to sharpen this up real quick. Use this color around the eyes. All right, right in the middle there. Okay, use it up top here. Start to bang into that other color a bit, that darker color. All along the top of the eye there. Leaving a little bit of space in there. Okay, in the middle. All right, let's also do this on this, inside this bottom feature we made here. Leaving a little bit out there. I'm gonna have to darken that in. I have to take out my dark brown again. That's okay.
All right, just gonna sharpen this up before I put it down. All right, let's see here. The next color I'd like to apply. I think I'm gonna color in the eyes. Let's get that done. I'm going to do golden eyes. And we really just need to color in that circle, the, the uh, outer circle here, okay? And just with one color, I got one gold color here. You can do any color eyes you want. I've chosen gold for today. That's it. Eyes are colored in. Okie dokie. I'm going to keep this gold out. And I'm going to use this to overlay this dark brown and the light brown some and come out a little bit towards these highlights out here. I'm not going to overdo this. Still got a lot of color to add. Do that up here as well. I'm just kind of applying this gold in between the scribble gaps and also sort of wherever my imagination says maybe there should be a little bit more color mixed in with some of this fur that we've put into gray and I'm just kind of aiming towards it. I'm not totally running into it. We have some more, I have some more ideas in here of how to build a little bit more uh, of these features up with color. So we'll get there in just a moment. I'm just going to sharpen up my gold. Hmm. Looks like my something moved. Let me push this up for you guys. Probably hit my head on the camera. Sorry for the shaking. Right. Oh man. All right. I'm almost done here with this gold. Just trying to hit some more of these scribble gaps. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an even darker brown. See if you can find a darker brown. If you can't, that's okay. Just use the first brown you had. We're going to apply a little more pressure because I really want to darken in around these eyes, underneath the brow, top of the nose, all in these features in here. We want to be really, really dark. So let's just go ahead and use the darkest brown we can find and just darken in under the eyes around the eyes and I'm using this circular pattern imagining that that's maybe some skin coming through there and that's the wrinkles or shape of the skin is taking on under the eye that's darkening in really really good really coloring this part in okay going right in underneath the top of the eye there 
Okay. And I want to do the same thing right down the middle. Nice and dark, connects to the top of the nose. Okay. Darkening in underneath this brow a lot. Okay. While I have this dark brown, I'm just going to pull out a couple lines here, add a little bit more detail. All right, I'm just going to sharpen this up. I'm going to use this a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to do some vertical lines here. All right, do a couple out here. Let's do just a few out here. Let's do some in here. Maybe there's just a few right out there. Okay. I'm going to use this a little bit up here. I'm going to make this little point. I'm just going to make a few little tiny lines into that brow area. Same thing here. I'm going to make a few little tiny lines into that bottom lip area. And I'm going to make a few tiny lines on the outside of the nose, on either side of the nose, rather. I'm going to do a little bit more detailing here. A little mustache or beard looking thing. Let's give him a couple little hairs there. I still feel like I want to darken around these blue features a little bit more. So I'm going to do that. My imagination called, and I picked up. Okay. All right. This guy's looking pretty cool so far, huh? Wicked colorful. I love it. Okay. So we do still have some white areas in here, which is okay. But I think we can make them look a little more prominent. And to do that, I'm actually going to go with a little bit of a darker value. I'm going to use orange to highlight some of this gold. And I think that's going to help the white come forward a little bit. Let's give it a shot. So I've got this cool, this bright orange. Okay, maybe it's not exactly regular orange. It's a, probably a shade lighter than regular orange. But regular orange will work just fine as well. And I'm going to use this to hit some of this gold that I've laid in and kind of keep it away from the white because my intention here is to use this orange to make the white pop out. Let's see if it works. using this color sparingly, but deliberately. And I think it worked. I think it, it did bring some of that white fur out a little bit. I like the effect I got. And while I have this orange out, I'm gonna add some of it right in here. And the reason I'm doing that is because orange and blue are opposites. So I feel like I can boost that blue feature a bit by putting a little bit of orange around it. Let's carry some of this orange right up through this fur, the dark fur. Okay, wow, this guy's looking pretty majestic. All right, I just want to give him a couple of little sweeping orange hairs out there. Wow, this guy looks cool, huh? I'm going to use this orange in the eye. I'm just going to do a little bit of a highlight on the right side of the eye. Yeah, you don't have to do that if you don't want, but I think that will make it look a little more mysterious, have a little more of that character we're always trying to capture. That looks pretty cool, huh? Okay. So, last color I think I want to add. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I want to bring the shape of this face out and make it a little bigger. But I don't want to color in any of these white spots. I really like the way those look. So I've got this pale yellow and I'm going to use this very sparingly. I'm not going to use this too much. I'm just going to try and get a little bit more 
width out of my mandrel's face here. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to use this yellow around the perimeter. Again, I don't want to fill in any of these cool white spaces that I've left. I like that. But let's get just some more, a little bit more body, a little bit more fullness to the overall shape of this guy. All right. That's it. No big deal. No big deal. Okay, so now that I'm seeing this whole shape come together, I think I also want to darken a little bit more around the nose. Now to do that, I'm going to go back to my gray. This light gray I had earlier. Come back here. All right, and I just want to make some more lines around here to give it a little bit more shadow a little more contrast make that white come forward a little bit do the same thing underneath the lip small though don't go too crazy here i'm just adding a little bit of contrast maybe on the side of the beard there's a little bit of that too all right i'm going to do it up here above the eye on top not sacrificing that white ridge that i've got in there that i like maybe there's just a little bit of this Mixing in out here. All right, cool, huh? I like the way this guy looks. Okay, I'm going to reach for my black pencil. That's right, folks, you heard it. I have a black pencil again. I got some new pencils in the mail yesterday. So, I am so excited to have a black pencil again. It's been so long. I'm just going to give it a quick little sharpen. You better believe that I'm going to use this as little as possible. But that's probably a lie. I'll probably use this as much as possible. Okay, so we're going to do what we have done a million times in the past. We're going to use this to add some key highlights. We're going to use this to highlight some of the fur, some of the transition areas where color of the fur changes. We're going to use this as a suggestive outline around the perimeter, but we're not going to outline hard, okay? First thing I want to do is just work in some of these details in transitions where the brown becomes orange, where the orange becomes gold. All right, not too much, just a little bit here and there. I'm going to add a few more lines around the eye top and bottom. Okay. I'm going to add some details up here. And then I'm going to add some of these suggestive outlines, but not all the, all the way around, just a little bit here and there. Maybe there's a couple hairs. All right. Let's give them some darker hairs around the nose. Maybe he's got some there. And some darker hairs on the bottom lip. All right, maybe he's got a little bit more of a shadow in the nostril there. All right, a little bit, not too much. All right, cool. All right, so we're getting there. Um, we're almost done. It is quarter of, so we're right on time. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is I feel like my nose could be a little more of a rich red. So in order to, en to enrich in that red, I'm actually gonna get a pretty vibrant orange. And I'm gonna lightly go over the darker parts. Again, I'm leaving that middle area white. Still want that to be Pretty prominent. I'm using this just to get a little more color out of that red and pink I used earlier. And this is a just very lightly overlaying right over that color. You can see I'm just getting a little bit more red out of that app applied color. Beautiful, nice and bold, right? I like the way that worked out so much. I think I'm going to do that a little bit 
in the nose area too, in this blue feature. I have a very light blue, and I'm just going to very, very lightly go over the blues I've laid in, still leaving this white highlight in the middle. I'm just using this to give my blue a little bit more of that value, that blue hue. Blue hue. All right. Cool. Hey, man, I think this thing looks pretty cool. I wouldn't... Uh, really know what else I wanted to do to it because I like it just the way it is. It looks like a sticker I slapped right on that page. So I think with that being said, I think it's time to sign this bad Larry and call it a day. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this drawing. I did. Super colorful, super fun, very, very unique. We're, we're getting into some very unique animals, aren't we? And uh, I still have more unique animals in stock for you. So rest assured, we have a lot of these fun drawings left to do. And with that, I'm going to sign my work. I think today, doo -doo 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 -dee, I have this cool light purple that came in my new set. I'm going to try and sign it with this. There we go. A mandrill or a baboon, but more technically a mandrill. Okay, guys, thanks again. I really appreciate you guys. Coloring with me today, please, please, please upload your drawings to directly to the page uh, so I can look at them and Allie can look at them and we can all look at each other's artwork and see um, what we created. I think that that's a fun way to keep this little art community connected. And um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks so much for the support and I know uh, I can tell you guys are enjoying yourself because of all the drawings. It's super fun. Um, so have a great day, enjoy some sunshine if you can, and uh, I promise I will do the same. So again, thanks guys, upload your drawings, be nice to your parents and they'll be nice to you. Don't forget to smile, you know what to do. Okay, later.